This is Dave VE3OI and this video is to demonstrate the prototype uh, software I've developed for the Arduino uh, Scalar Network Analyzer that the uh, Peel Amateur Radio Club will be building at an upcoming uh, build-a-thon. So first I'd like to just review the uh, prototype hardware I've been using to develop the software. So at the heart of the a prototype is the Arduino Mega 2560, which is connected to a 3.2 inch TFT display. There's also an I2C memory chip on board, um, which is used to store various sweep, uh, sweeps and uh, uh, parameters used for uh, conducting the sweeps. I've also got several controls. I've got a, a, a rotary encoder and two push buttons and that allows me to control the uh, the menu. Uh, currently right now I'm using an SI5351 PLL as a frequency generator but in the future there's no reason why this can't be an 809851 or any other uh, DDS or PLL. Uh, it's uh, using an 808307 logarithmic amplifier as the uh, detector so the SI5351 will put out a signal to the device under test and the device under test will return the signal back to the uh, 8307. The Arduino digitizes that and uh, will chart or, or display the values on the uh, TFT display. As well I've got a TTY console defined for uh, doing the prototype development and troubleshooting and eventually the system will also be able to be controlled from a TTY console in addition to the menu and the uh, push button controls. Here's the prototype I used to develop software for the, uh, the, the Arduino SNA. It consists of the, the uh, TFT display, a custom board that I etched, which contains the SI5351, the 8307, and as well it also contains a, a I2C memory, which is used to store a various uh, configuration information and sweeps as well. Uh, below this board is the, uh, the, the Arduino uh, 2560 Mega. So I've got here, this is the connector going to the uh, 8307. This is the uh, connector going to the SI5351. So this is my output signal. This is my input signal. As well, I have a couple of uh, controls. I've got a rotary uh, encoder here for changing the frequency and changing various parameters. And I've got two push buttons as well for uh, using the menus uh, options. Also too, I had to use an external voltage regulator. Uh, the, the voltage regulator on the Arduino board, I burnt out several of them because the TFT display draws too much current and the, um, the voltage regulator on the Arduino uh, heats up and burns out. So here I've got a 7805 uh, external uh, voltage regulator with a heat sink. I've got it connected to my um, meter here which uh, monitors the, the temperature and uh, so far the heat sink gets up to about uh, 80 degrees. So I'm going to turn on the unit and let's take a look at the menu. So I've zoomed in on the screen here and um, once the software is first loaded on the Arduino and you power it on, it complains that the SI5351 is not uh, calibrated. And once you press any of the uh, push buttons, it resets and it comes back and it says, oh, the 808307 is also not calibrated. Then it resets and it goes into the menu mode. So the screen I've got uh, set up is that there's a top banner which shows the program name and version and as well it's got this uh, portion of the screen which shows the menu options and uh, that will also display the graphs and charts 
And down at the bottom here, this will be showing the various data from the sweeps and as well we'll be showing user prompts. So the first calibration that needs to be done is to calibrate the uh, 8307. So here we would select from the menu, it says calibrate DBM. And so once we execute that, it comes up and it says connect a zero DBM source to the 8307. So I'm, I'm using my XG3, my Elecraft XG3, which is generating a zero DBM signal. And I, it says push any button, so I push a button. Then it says connect a minus 73 DBM source. And again, I'm using my XG3 and I push any button and so there the 8307 is now calibrated so if I go into the uh, power meter option and I enable that so this is giving me what the what the Arduino is reading from the 8307 and converting it into DBM it's also showing a, a measurement of the deviation that the Arduino is seeing from the uh, 8307. So this is giving us how stable the signal is as well. It's giving us microvolts and microwatts over here. So I'm putting out a minus 73 dBm signal and it's saying minus 73 and here I'm putting out a zero dBm signal and you see I'm getting very close to zero dBm. So for the next calibration I'm going to calibrate the SI5351. So what that's doing, that's just compensating for the frequency for the uh, crystal on the SI5351 to make sure it's putting out an accurate uh, frequency. So if I select uh, calibrate frequency from the menu option here, I get a frequency display, a, a frequency uh, value where I could change the frequency put out by the SI5351 and it shows uh, the calibration values that are used. So I can change the frequency here or I can change the actual uh, calibration value. So if I go over to my frequency counter here you can see that it's putting out uh, right now uh, 10 megahertz and a little just uh, three Hertz over so if I was to go and change the the, um, the calibration value I can try and get that down to 10 so it's going too high so I'm changing my value so there I've got it pretty close to uh, 10 megahertz and so what I was doing was just changing the value of the uh, calibration coefficient there by changing the rotary uh, dial. So it says uh, press PB1 to save and exit. So I push PB1. So next thing to do would be to calibrate uh, uh, the sweep and what that basically does it's uh, categorizing uh, the uh, signal level that's the SI5351 uh, that's putting out as a function of frequency and the reason we need to categorize that is that we can compensate for any roll off in frequency so the way we would do that is go over and select calibrate uh, sweep and so we select that and it says connect the input to the output and uh, push the rotary button. So I've got the uh, SI5351 connected to the AD8307 with a straight through cable and I push my rotary and so there it's done. So the unit is now completely uh, calibrated. So to describe the remaining functions I've got developed for the SNA that's available through this uh, menu. I've got the SNA connected to a 20 meter uh, low pass filter there. There is a frequency generator function 
which what uh, this does, it uh, causes the SI5351 to display, uh, to put out a frequency that's indicated here in blue, and then it reads the uh, return value from the 8307 and it displays it on the screen. So if I was to go and change the frequency and manually go through the filter, you'll see the values changing there. There are three options for doing sweeps with the SNA. Uh, the first option is doing a single sweep. The sec second option is doing multiple sweeps to overlay. Um, sweeps, I, I think right now I've got it set so it can do six sweeps. And as well, there's an option where you could recall uh, saved uh, sweeps. So let's first of all, let's do a single sweep. So we select single sweep. So here I can start, I can define the start frequency, stop frequency. The increment is automatically calculated for me. And as well, I have got the option to define two markers. So what that will allow me to do is it will draw two markers on my display and give me the actual signal level at those markers. So for example, this could be for the uh, suspected 3 dB points of my bandpass filter. I can define those and it will show me um, how the curve, how the plot looks relative uh, to that. So I can change the frequency. It says uh, press PB1 to switch, PB2 to switch. So if I do that, I can switch between start and stop frequencies to mark and so forth. And I can define what the various sweep parameters are. It says press PB1 to start. So it's got a progress bar along the bottom. So there's the, the chart of the, uh, of the sweep. So it's showing me the start, stop, increment. And here it's giving me the marker for um, marker M1 and marker M2. So it also says I could press the rotary to exit or I could press PB1, PB2 to save. So I'm going to save this. And now it says here uh, the rotary is for the cursor and PB1, PB2 to exit. So here I've got a cursor where I could manually scroll through the, the plot to see what the response is. And it's displaying the response here for me where it says DBC uh, current. So for multiple sweeps, I would just select uh, the option X sweeps, and it's exactly the same as doing a single sweep. It allows me to set the start and stop frequency and the markers, but I'm only doing this once. I only do this for the first sweep, and then su successive sweeps will use that information there. And as well, the, the uh, scaling of the plot will always use that first sweep and subsequent sweeps will be scaled to that uh, to the scaling used for that first plot. So here it says uh, PB2 to switch between the uh, parameters to define and press PB1 to start. So I push PB1 and it's doing the sweep. There's my sweep of my filter. And here it says rotary to, to continue so to generate another sweep or press PB1, PB2 to exit. So I'm just going to kind of disconnect the filter here in a manner that's going to generate some other response. And I push my rotary encoder. I see it's doing the second sweep. And there it overlays the second uh, sweep on top of there. And if I try and connect this up in a different way to generate a different sweep, So there you can see the third sweep and uh, so forth. So there is an option, as I mentioned, allows me to recall sweeps that I've saved. So if I go over to the files menu, you'll see that there's one file saved. And so it's telling me select file and push rotary. 
So here, if I had saved multiple uh, sweeps, I could scroll through through them and select it. But there's only one I saved so far. So I push the rotary, and it displays it, and it also displays the the two markers. And again, I can use I can scroll scroll through this with the cursor and see what the actual values are here. So in terms of maintaining the files, currently I only have one option available here, which is to reset the files. And basically what that does, if you select that, it just deletes all your files. So I haven't implemented anything where you can selectively go and delete files. And by the way, when I, when I uh, make mention of a file here, this is a proprietary structure to the Arduino. It's not like a Windows or a DOS uh, level file where you could take the file from here, transfer it to your Windows machine and uh, and see the contents of the file. It's a file con construct within the, the Arduino. I've also got a couple other options which are not available in this release of the software but uh, will be put into future releases of the software probably within the next six months or so. It's nothing that uh, I'll be doing immediately, but uh, it's it's going to be for characterizing crystals. So it'll it'll be able to calculate the emotional parameters of a crystal, as well as do some bridge related functions like a return a loss bridge type functions, where you could potentially characterize an antenna to determine the uh, the resonant point of an antenna. This concludes the walkthrough of the prototype SNA software. I've uh, developed. I'm sure we'll be talking about this at uh, our upcoming homebrew meetings, and I welcome any comments, feedback. But until then, thanks for watching.